The Office of Inspector General and a top aide to President Obama are investigating the scope of the problem and allegations many veterans died after suffering long delays at VA hospitals and that there have been cover-ups and mismanagement in the agency. President's made it clear the job of Veteran Affairs Secretary Eric Shinseki could be on the line. Shinseki attended the ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. We've heard from hundreds of people over the past week about delays in treatment and the quality of care at Veterans Hospital in Dallas. But one email really stood out and we wanted to share this family's story. So here's Becky Oliver's Fox 4 investigation. This is a family that really believed in the VA, didn't want to go anywhere else, even though they had other options. He was in Desert Storm, fighting for our country. Jason Bigley was a helicopter gunner in the Army, now at 42, a father to eight-year-old Julia, and employed with private health care insurance. When he noticed a lump under his arm, he knew there was only one place to go, the Dallas Veterans Hospital. He wanted to go to the VA because he felt like that's where he was going to get the better care. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the case. Bigley's wife, Lauren Watkins, says he signed up in December to get an appointment. But right from the start, there was one delay after another. They said, we're all booked up. You can call in and see if somebody's canceled and we might be able to fit you in. So he called almost every other day to see if they could fit him in. Bigley's medical records show he called in in January complaining of pain and told the VA the lump under his arm was growing and painful. He needed an appointment. It wasn't until March 18th he saw a dermatologist and got a biopsy. He was diagnosed with cancer, melanoma. Watkins says he was admitted to the VA in early May with breathing trouble, and that's when she witnessed the VA's service firsthand. He wasn't getting any care. They just wanted to stick him in the hospice unit there and be done with it. She says he was getting radiation, but only if she got him there. I had to physically get him out, out of the bed myself. Nobody would even help. And to put him in a wheelchair and roll him down to the radi radiology myself. I did everything. Everything. Nobody ever came down to check on him, to see if he needed anything. Their excuse, which I heard at least five times a day, is we're government. We're government. We're government. That's not an excuse. Thanks for being with us. Lauren says she was anxious to hear from the director of the VA on Fox 4 News last week. She hoped he'd provide answers. These are just allegations right now. She says Jeff Milligan's comments only left her angry and bitter. I go home every night wanting to make and look myself in the mirror and want to be able to say and can say that we've done the right thing by veterans today. And I can't see how he can look in the mirror and that's what he said. I go home every day and look in the mirror and how? How can he even, knowing what is what they are doing? Watkins says she fought for a week to get Bigley moved to a civilian hospital on their private insurance, but more delays. Then finally, he was transferred to Baylor Hospital's Cancer Center. Compare what you are getting at the VA to what you're getting here. Night and day. Night and day difference. Watkins says she knows Bigley's cancer is now terminal. Tests at Baylor show it has spread to his brain. But at Baylor, the treatment and attitude changed. They got him right in. They got him an oncologist. He saw him first thing. Um, had a treatment plan ready. The doctor isn't even recommending hospice at this point. And that's all that they were recommending at the VA. That was their only option at the VA. In a statement, the VA says it takes every concern regarding quality of care seriously. Unfortunately, the patient's disease had progressed too far before he sought medical attention. It says Bigley was provided the most up-to-date treatments for melanoma, including medications not always available in the private sector. And the VA adds that escorts transport patients, but Watkins refused a nursing sitter. Watkins says absolutely not true. The VA did not address why it took two months to get a biopsy when he complained of a painful growth. Now this 37-year-old stay-at-home mom has so many questions, concerns, and regrets. It's a very aggressive cancer. We all realize this. So it needs aggressive treatment. It needs to be done immediately, not put off and delayed. That's my worst regret is going to the VA.
Why do you say that? Because if we had come here maybe two weeks ago, he, he might not be in this situation. That's my greatest regret, is, is ever even going there. Watkins says she's concerned that other families may be in the same situation, and she hopes by speaking out, someone may listen. We'll keep you posted. Becky Oliver, Fox 4 News.